we are flying since a couple of years with two demonstrator aircraft. They are remote controlled uh, in the south of Spain. Uh, they are very similar to the Lilium jet and we have basically flown every maneuver we would want to be flying with the Lilium jet. But uh, this will come to an end sooner or later because we are going to replace it by the real prototype aircraft. Uh, two of them are in build. Uh, one is almost ready, the other one halfway through. And we are going to start number three in a couple of weeks. And then early next year we are going to take off first time with a pilot on board from our Munich airport. And then it will be a fantastic journey for all of us to learn but also to witness the aesthetics and the silent flight of the Lilium jet. I was super excited when I joined two years ago and first time I went to Spain and saw it flying. I couldn't believe how silent it was. But this one for sure is another dimension. It's another league and I think everybody is eager, not only our, our employees, everybody is eager to see it fly and to hear it fly because you cannot almost not hear it. So we had a couple of milestones, uh, let's say on the aircraft side, it was the closing of the detailed design, starting production, starting the final assembly line. Now seeing the aircraft get together, you can really see how it looks. Uh, on the company side, most likely uh, we obtained uh, design organization approval from the EASA late last year, which is kind of a nightly accolade uh, to, to attest that you have processes, means, skills in place to be eligible to design such an aircraft. On the commercial side, lots of orders, maybe the most impressive one we signed last week with Saudia, a state-owned uh, airline, one of the top 30 airlines of the world, buying 100 aircraft from us. That means a lot to us because it shows a lot of confidence of the customer into us as a company and into our product. So it will be a large market. Uh, I think the potential is even more than the initial deal is what we've signed up for. Uh, it, encompasses the whole market because Saudia is using a premium version of our aircraft for high net worth individuals to fly along the Red Sea but we'll also use a shuttle version that will be heavily loaded uh, flying pilgrims from Jeddah to Mecca uh, and uh, we believe it's just the beginning of a big partnership. We also have the authorities of Saudia standing by. We had a visit of the president of Gaka which is the local authority fully committed to make it fly by end of 26. No, it's a fantastic journey. On the one side, Lilium started some nine years ago as a startup with four students, and that's good because a mature company would potentially not endeavor such a crazy adventure flying on batteries, but it works and our architecture works. And now when you want to certify it, when you want to industrialize it, when you want to build it, when you want to sell it to professionals like Saudia, you need to also bring a lot of legacy professionalism into the company whilst you're not losing the innovative element of the startup. So this uh, balance between keeping the momentum of a startup company but make it a real professional aerospace company, I would say is most likely the biggest challenge uh, that we are facing and for sure financing such a company. We are pre-revenue uh, and developing such a complex product, it's not a matter of a couple of millions uh, of, of dollars, it's many more. And you need to work in the capital market. You need to convince investors, you need to convince um, banks, you need to convince analysts, you need to talk with all those guys uh, to make sure that they stay by your side. When you're looking from a pure aerospace perspective, uh, I would say it's rather easy because you are talking technical terms and this is what people can assess. Uh, when you look at the broader vision, uh, this is not an aircraft that will be built in small quantities. This is a complete new market and it will have use cases that we are not even thinking about and it becomes more a vision. But if you want to convince an investor to follow a vision that's much harder than following some hard business plan that you must have as well. Uh, but I think it, it's a much broader change that we are engaging to with flying electric uh, and people need to come to, to the point to say yes, this is an alternative to hydrogen or sustainable aviation uh, fuels. Not everybody has arrived there, but we see it's getting more and more. So the current aircraft, which can take off and land vertically, is going to extend in range. Uh, we are going to get better batteries over time. Forecasters are saying 5% capacity increase per kilogram per year. And uh, with 10% more capacity, our aircraft can fly 20% longer because it's very efficient and it, the purpose is to fly longer. So by 2035, we will see our aircraft flying 400 kilometers. Uh, but then it would not make sense to take off and land vertically, so we are already looking into how can we use our technologies and put it into a more conventional aircraft, which would fly at higher altitude and would fly much longer than the current one does. 
we really want to have the market of eVTOL, but we also want to decarbonize more conventional flying with battery electric flying, which we believe is much more efficient and much faster available uh, than hydrogen, for example. I would say at the top end of flying, which is big aircraft flying over the Atlantic that will be SAF, uh, sustainable aviation uh, fuel, I would say shorter ranges up to 2,000 kilometers, 100 packs that will be battery electric flying. And I believe the niche for hydrogen, which can basically not do much more than battery electric, will diminish to a point where potentially hydrogen flying doesn't make sense anymore. Aviation is, uh, I, I, I'm there by heart. But I think aviation has come to a turning point. You cannot just, yes, for sure, big aircraft, you need to make them more efficient. You need to put uh, stuff into it. But there's an obligation also when you want to have uh, political and societal acceptance of flying in the future, you need to come to different solutions. If on top you want to introduce a new mode of transport, you are condemned to do it CO2-free and noise-free. So the challenge is out there and I think we are giving one of the answers and maybe more answers possible, but I think we are giving a very significant answer.